in a region where breaking news uh, related to armed conflicts, and we can see that today as well in, in Palestine, take over the front pages, it's a luxury that journalists can take time to research and explore uh, new journalistic formats and publish about the underlying root causes of societal problems like climate change, impacting our daily lives. Uh, today, we have five esteemed speakers who will contribute to the topic in their specific expertise. And as an introduction, I have asked each speaker to share a personal picture of their uh, relation on the topic of climate change uh, and why it's important for their work. Um, so before we go to the first expert speaker, I would like to introduce you to my colleague, uh, an esteemed journalist and author of the book, Water Guards, uh, expert trainer and co-host of today's webinar, Khaled Suleiman. So Khaled, uh, I'm extremely happy that you're here with us. Uh, you have shared also a picture with us. Can you maybe say something about it? Hello, Boris, and thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here with you today with a number of uh, colleagues, uh, female and male, a number of experts in this uh, regard. Uh, honestly speaking, the only thing that I can say here is that uh, before we used to look at the subject of uh, climate in the journalism, in Arabic journalism, as uh, a prestige or luxury, uh, a journalism, the journalist who doesn't have anything to do, not anything to do, or who don't have anything to worry about, but the climate would be the one who is related to it. But now today, the climate issue is uh, an existential issue uh, related to our way of living, our food, our medicine, uh, the water that we drink uh, also. So this issue today is actually, uh, well, I can tell you that there is a new generation of journalists, uh, uh, women and uh, male in Iraq, new names, very important, writing about this issue and giving it the importance that it deserves in journalism. And of course, this is thanks to some institutions, uh, journalistic institutions, international ones actually, and also the platform, the uh, media platforms, local and regional, who is related to this issue. And I can tell you, uh, for example, as uh, FPU, uh, Free Press Unlimited, gave a good space, an important space to this issue and helped Iraqi journalists to take care of this subject. Uh, and I can uh, uh, tell you about the website of Daraj. It's the first uh, Arabic um, uh, platform that gave us good space, a very important space to this subject, uh, while the chief in, uh, editors and chef uh, in uh, other uh, platforms did not give this importance. I'm not saying that they did not care at all, but they did not give that much care to this issue. The most important subject that we took into account here in this issue in this regard is that how can we help as journalists uh, the social uh, the civil societies and how can we reach the information uh, and uh, and uh, convey them to the society of course the most important thing is to build a bridge here between civil societies and the academicians and the uh, experts and the scientists uh, and also uh, with the decision makers we should not forget about the uh, awareness the general awareness that we should build uh, while giving this information these news these stories for the civil societies local societies we we are not putting them in front of the fair uh, while well, we're actually putting them in front of the reality or conveying the reality of the climate change and how to deal with this. From here, I would like to mention a very important point. We take it in our program uh, that is funded by Free Press Unlimited, which is the uh, story-based solutions 
لماذا؟ Why? This is a very important uh, subject because uh, readers uh, uh, do not like uh, the very mere science stories or uh, the statistics related to the climate. But uh, how to convey this information, how to give them, serve them, or build this bridge between the receiver and the media platforms. This is what's important. The main important way tool is to take the story, the uh, journalistic story and, ch and turn these uh, data, these statistics, uh, mere statistics and the scientists, uh, scientific information into a story, into a very uh, simplified uh, informational story that can be read by the uh, society. We can take the visual story or we can use the other uh, audiovisual uh, tools uh, or the multimedia uh, tools that we can use also. All of these uh, vocabulary or the, all of these tools can help us in conveying the information and the stories related to the climate. Uh, uh, we can do that. We can convey this to the audience. I would like to finish my words with the following. And up until now, in the Arabic media, especially in the Middle East, in the North in, uh, Africa, the uh, coverage of <clears throat> uh, climate media, uh, climate uh, journalism, do not take more than 1%, imagine, which is really bad, uh, because what we are seeing at the moment from the killing and crimes and the tourism against people, what we see at the moment in Gaza, in other areas, in Iraq, in other places, of course, they are very important issues, but uh, the issue of having the clean water, drinkable water, uh, the uh, fresh air to breathe, these are also important. Thank you very much. And again, I'm very happy to be with you, uh, with, uh, with my colleagues as well. Thank you. Thank you, Khaled, uh, for this uh, wonderful introduction. Also the introduction to our program, uh, the, the Planetary Security Initiative, um, with the collaboration of Klingendal um, is the, that we do a uh, uh, journalism fellow production um, um, uh, together also with, uh, with Khaled. And I'm extremely happy that he is with us. Um, now uh, we will move to, to the first expert speaker uh, after Khaled, who will introduce actually the, the, the bigger picture of why is it so important? Why should we care about uh, the, the climate issue in the context of Iraq? So with no further ado, I would like to introduce you to Rana al Hajj from the Climate Change Environment Program uh, of uh, Isam Fares Policy Institute at uh, the American University in Beirut. Um, Rana, uh, welcome. Thank you for being with us. Um, I also ask you to, uh, to send a picture. Um, would you like to say something about, uh, about it? Thank you. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Boris, and uh, thank you for inviting me to be in this uh, webinar. Um, I don't know, is the picture up yet? I don't see it. Okay, uh, I, I'm switched to Arabic now. This Boris So Boris asked me to send this uh, uh, private individual uh, picture. These are my children in Lebanon in the pine tree forest. The importance of this picture is that we are soon in the lifespan of my kids. We will uh, you we will lose the pine tree forest most of it uh, as much as the other natural sites in Lebanon because of the climate change. So I thought that this picture represents a very important issue related to the climate change. And uh, well, thank you for for that and for sharing this with us and. And uh, please um, continue with your presentation uh, as you have presented. Just um, let me share my screen. Okay. Are you able to see it now? Shay. Wonderful. Okay. Um, so. I will start the presentation today with this picture, which I think that most of you 
is accustomed with it or saw it before. This is a picture of uh, a picture of the drought in the area starting 2008. In this area, you can see uh, the color brown shows the the intensity of the drought uh, in these years in the region. And of course, it had a very important effect on many countries and the sectors uh, like in, uh, like agriculture, uh, water, etc. Uh, this the, the effect of this, uh, uh, you can see it on the reservoir of Qadisiya. You can see the comparison here between the 2009 Qadisiya reservoir to 2006 Qadisiya reservoir. And you can see the percentage, how uh, small it got. After this drought, there were a lot of studies that showed or reports showed uh, how this drought actually uh, was one of the reasons causing uh, in, uh, diseases, infections in Syria, uh, that actually killed uh, the yellow rust. So you can see the, uh, this area, it actually uh, killed like 20 to 50% of uh, the wheat uh, uh, production of 2010. We know what happened after that in Syria, the conflict that uh, was there, that's still there. A lot, a lot of reports, uh, scientists, uh, scientific reports and journalistic reports that actually talked about the relationship between the, the drought that happened and the conflict uh, happened in, happening in Syria. Why am I talking about this? I'm not saying that the drought that happened in that area uh, caused by the climate changes. There is nothing after that that actually uh, can be used as an evidence to that. But we can say that this region is all, uh, was already a, a, an area or a rage region that uh, had a lot of conflict, uh, uh, affected already by a lot of uh, deterioration of climate the natural resources uh, and this caused of course the vulnerability in the society uh, this we had in the area already and there was no scientific studies that shows the direct relation between the natural resources and the degradation of the natural resources and the climate conflict but there is something that has been actually agreed upon, which is that it played a role in uh, increasing this uh, uh, danger that exists in this area. So we know that we are coming to a, 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 a harsher uh, period where you can see the degradation even more in the natural resources. If you can take a look at this, res uh, this study by uh, Esqua, uh, uh, on the left, uh, this map shows the uh, expectation of the uh, climate change. We're talking here about the, the temperature, which is the scenario, uh, the positive scenario. The, uh, you can see that the increase in uh, degrees was about uh, 1.5 to 2 degrees. Well, you see here the, uh, the right map. This is the worst. Uh, scenario that can be expected, and we think that we are moving toward this scenario. The temperature raise annually here in the region will be between two to three uh, uh, Celsius. And we are talking about 2.7 uh, degrees. Uh, so on the when we're talking here about uh, the uh, upcoming period, so not very far away. So if you're looking at the annual uh, rainfall, uh, which is, a, this is a good scenario. We can see that there is a degradation in the precipitation, which is uh, the yellow area. The Iraq uh, will not be really affected that much as uh, Morocco, for example. But when you look at this worst scenario, which we are moving toward at the moment, uh, we think that Iraq will start to be affected uh, starting 2000, 
46. Why is this important? What is the relation between all of these changes and the data that I showed you? These are two only indicators that is related to the climate change. Why is this important? How can we connect this to the conflict, to the vulnerability, the society in the society that affects the local societies? This is a very simplified chart that but really beautifully done. This is the chain that is related to each other. If we have a change in temperature and uh, precipitation, uh, this will affect the ecosystem services and this, uh, the ecosystem, sorry, and this will affect on the ecosystem services. We are here talking about the water uh, drinkable and the agriculture, the energy. And uh, so this will affect also about our uh, food security, the uh, water security, the, our personal security. And this will affect uh, in uh, turn on the social security as well. And they affect the conflicts in turn uh, in uh, the national level. This is one of the example that we can give you in the study that we did in mass and the uh, association of some ferries. So we did it with Brazil, with Brazil, which is the effect of the climate change on the, the agriculture sector in Lebanon and the degradation of the production in agriculture. And you can see here that the degradation of the production effects will affect the economy of the country that we can call it the higher order economy. And in uh, this will uh, create immigration internally and externally as well. So we can look, we can see this uh, chain here of effect that started from climate but then it goes into uh, also the level of a social level of each country. So, uh, as I can say, the climate change uh, system uh, will affect the natural resources, will affect the human security, uh, uh, and this will affect the so uh, social stability as well. So we are we have to keep uh, our safe guard this uh, system that we have here to uh, decrease the uh, risk of the societal stability. So this is a study uh, done in 2018 that uh, actually uh, identified the climate related security risks in Iraq. and uh, actually identified the agricultural sector that will affect the livelihood uh, and thus will uh, affect the support, uh, increase in local support for the terrorist groups. We also have another effect, which is about the insufficient governance capacity to address and respond to climate change and environmental degradations. So they will not be able to actually uh, give the services. Uh, and there will be an increase in dependency on water flows from uh, uh, riparian neighborhoods and uh, regional. And this will affect, of course, the regional stability. And this will, of course, furthermore, will create a mass displacement uh, because of all of these changes and factors related to the uh, uh, climate. Uh, and there will be also uh, stress and uh, more tension, uh, like sectarian uh, tension, to be able to reach water and uh, food in the local uh, societies. So as I have actually mentioned this very general idea about the climate change and how is this actually reflecting on the security, on the vulnerability of the societies, I'm gonna give you my personal opinion as persons working in the sector for a long period of time on uh, how can the journalism play a role in this subject from my point of view, from our point of view, that those, uh, we are the people who are working with the decision makers and we are working with the researcher. So I'm gonna talk about what we, uh, uh, what we are calling blind spots. 
as a journalist. Uh, first of all, uh, sometimes I feel that the journalists uh, are as a reactor, reactive. I'm sorry, I don't know how it's said in Arabic. That's why I called it reactive. So they talk about the subject after it happened. Okay. So they don't plan uh, beforehand. They talk about the when you talk about the issue, it's the it already happened. You know, Diana, when uh, uh, anything that happened in, in Lebanon, no one talks about anything. Uh, but when the, for example, forest uh, fires start, starts, every journalist starts to talk about the reports and why is this happening, etc. Uh, so journalism is not helping in solving this uh, the problem before it happened. Uh, so I can also see all the time in the reports uh, and in the news, which is not right, uh, that they actually they are not uh, um, uh, taking the information very closely uh, and uh, they look at the secondary sources. Uh, uh, so it's, they're not working as an investigative uh, journalism, no. <laughs> so it's either that they talk about everything related to climate changes which is uh, uh, this actually creates a negative reaction with the people feel like they are not and they are not able to do anything about it or what they do is that or oh, they relate the issue uh, with the climate change very uh, remotely so i think that the role that the journalists can play here as mentioned by Khaled, uh, in the translation of the idea in a very simple way to for the information to reach not only the people but the decision makers as well in a very simple way they can do this uh, they can read more about this and they can know the right uh, wording because they can reach the right information then. So they need to know the right terminology. They need to be proactive. So talk about the issue before it happens and they need to uh, have a relationship between or to convey the idea or the right in fact it facts to the civil to the society to the decision makers to pressure them to advocate this issue and to take care of this uh, uh, issue before uh, uh, it goes further uh, so they can actually pressure the decision makers this way so yeah i think here i'm done i'm done with, i don't know boris well, Rana, I think uh, thank you so much for this uh, enlightening um, talk that you that you gave, and also reflecting on the on the data and the impact it has, and where possible blind spots are, and also recommendations to the journalist community. And I think this is um, also a val valuable invitation to journalists to to go beyond um, and to 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 deal with you. And I and I hope when when people have questions. Uh, please uh, put them in the chat um, also to Rana um, um, and also that we can also to everyone, maybe we can also uh, tackle the questions during the course of this uh, Zoom session. So please uh, Rana, uh, stay with us and, and uh, hopefully you can also uh, comment on the, on the other speakers. Um, I think here what we wanted to do actually go from the theory, the dimension of research which is big and talks about the, the big data. Um, and now transition actually to what uh, local communities and people who are affected by climate change actually expect from journalists. Um, and for this section of the, of the webinar session, we invited uh, two uh, speakers. Uh, the first uh, speaker is a uh, journalist who was uh, a journalism fellow with us in a previous um, fellowship, um, uh, Sanar Hassan, who's an Iraqi journalist who focuses on, on gender issues, women's rights and minorities in societies experiencing war and sectarian, sectarian conflict. 
Um, and the second speaker that will also reflect on the same question, what local communities expect from journalists is uh, Mr. Jasim Al Asadi. He's a managing director of the uh, CBESH Office of Nature Iraq. I hope I, I pronounced it correctly. Um, and is born in the depth, depths of uh, central marshes of South Iraq. Um, so welcome to the both of you uh, to this part of the Zoom session. I also ask you to introduce yourself through a picture. So maybe I can ask uh, Sanar, um, are you able to tell a little bit what your personal connection is with climate change? Hello. Hello. Hello, Boris. Maybe we can start with. Uh, ah, this is um, first. I would like to invite uh, Sanar. Yeah. I'm sorry. Her voice quality is not pretty good so i so the climate in iraq is very actually uh, wealthy uh, but you can see that uh, we are starting to care with the about the climate change before that we the journalism was all about the conflicts and the wars in the region but uh, uh, we started to be a part of UNESCO of the uh, historical heritage. So the journalists started to, to take care about this uh, issue. But Al Ahwar uh, started to actually uh, suffer from the climate change and also the uh, pollution. Uh, you can see that there is a lot of people who are actually depending on fishery in this area, and we have a lot of natural resources here and animals, but Al Ahwar is actually getting polluted day by day because of no awareness increasing in the area about the continuous fishery, etc. So a lot of uh, uh, of people who's working there, they actually use the substance to uh, fish and to uh, hunt uh, birds with uh, unsanitary or unlogical uh, uh, way to hunt. So this actually might cause, so if this continues like this, a lot of people will have to immigrate uh, because they will not be able to gain any income. Uh, at the moment, uh, the dams are started to be built and the pollution is started to increase. And for this reason, uh, the, the there's a degradation in the uh, fish and the lives inside the water. So the journalist needs to build a bridge between these societies and this issue so they can talk about the stories uh, uh, to withdraw, to draw the attention of the Arabic reader and the Iraqi reader. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you so much, uh, Sana, for your already for your Please. intervention also related to to the story that you've done, which was very valuable on, on how do you as a journalist translate the stories of the local community into your storytelling. And, and, um, and hopefully we will take, tackle some questions later on, uh, which will be moderated also by Khaled. Um, uh, before we go into that discussion, um, I would love to uh, give the floor also to, uh, to Mr. Jassim uh, Al-Asadi. Um, you also introduced us to a picture, uh, and maybe in between when the picture will, will be uh, put uh, in the screen, um, I would like you to ask Mr. Uh, Mr. Jassim, 
you are living in the marshes and you are quite close to the local communities and you have seen so many journalists coming and going. Um, and, and maybe you can also tell you, us a little bit what, who is in the picture and what's going on and what does it tell about your, uh, actually your relationship with, with climate change and the importance of your work. And maybe afterwards, maybe also tackle um, the question on what do journalists take, need to take into account when they deal with local communities? Uh, thank, thank you, Paris. Uh, uh, shukran, uh, Paris thank you, Paris, and thanks to all the colleagues attending with us here. Uh, it is uh, really a good opportunity for us to talk about how journalism can play an effective role in Iraq. The photo that I've shared reflects the situation in Iraq, where we have a three consecutive seasons uh, of the station. We can talk about uh, what the political uh, events in, in 1991 and then in 2003, and how that affected uh, the, the environment as well. That's why we had uh, to relocate some of the dams that we previously have set in order to compensate for the loss of water. Uh, we have uh, residents in the area uh, who are proud of their history, who are proud that they are affiliated uh, with this land. And they they are still using some terminology that is related to uh, water and irrigation uh, that has a Sumerian origin, it is not Arabic origin. Uh, let me move now to talk about the climate change as an opportunity uh, for journalists uh, to investigate and to reflect uh, something different from the stereotypical story that we convey about the environment. Uh, it's an opportunity to produce something that is interesting for the audience and at the same time influential and has an effect and impact on the community. Associated Press, uh, Reuters, Sahaf al We are talking here about journalism in general. I'm talking about the Associated Press, I'm talking about um, journalism in different countries. This is a new uh, field to be investigated. And we have been uh, reading the these stories uh, since a couple of years, but there is an increased uh, focus on this, uh, a graduate increase in the focus on the focus on this. Uh, this story, I believe, is a bridge, as my colleague said. It's a bridge that links local communities, decision makers, and journalists. It aims at drawing attention to the risks. Uh, talking about options for uh, finding solutions for problems as well and identifying uh, gaps or possible uh, weaknesses. Um, if we are talking about Euphrates, for example, in northern Iraq and northern Syria, there is a huge decrease in the level of waters in, in the river. It reached about five meters of decrease, which is a huge number. And now we are trying to bring in more water from uh, Iran. This means that next season we will have to compensate for the uh, extra water supply we brought from Iran, and we will be facing further drought. That's why we need to encourage decision makers to take immediate and proper decisions. that 
it truly affects the situation when it comes to the environment. We we are all aware that without water we cannot live. Let me tell you that I'm preparing a book now and I will be publishing it in English. I'm working on it in collaboration with a journalist. And in this book, I have noted the importance of not talking only about the uh, geological aspect of the environment and not to talk only about the historic uh, context. But rather, we need to tell stories and to talk about what has been done, what has been achieved. I believe that climate change, though it might seem is something from technical perspective, uh, something very wide and something that could be studied in details in each uh, part of uh, the Iraqi territory. And in each of these parties, we can find uh, that people are blaming the same uh, reason for uh, for the lack of water. Whenever you ask someone about <laughs> the scarcity of the water, they say it's because Iran and Turkey have built so many dams on uh, the rivers in their territory. That's why they are depriving us from uh, the water supply. However, uh, we are witnessing something unprecedented. Uh, the level of drought is constantly increasing, and there is an increase in uh, in the temperature as well. That's why we are facing a difficult situation. We can say that we are losing a huge amount of uh, the underground water uh, reserve. And this is affecting the uh, biodiversity. We are talking about large areas of territories that exceed uh, 5,000 uh, kilometers, square kilometers. That's why we need to think strategically and have uh, a plan uh, that that is capable of uh, helping us to reach a solution. We need to think of uh, where to replace potable water with saline water. The plan should start with assessing the risks and then uh, developing steps to mitigate them as much as possible. Uh, I think I've exceeded my time or maybe i'm just on time so i will try to conclude now i think we by 2035 uh, we will be uh, we need to be prepared for what's coming and we need to to start taking the needed and um, critically needed steps starting from now thank you everyone well thank you so much uh, mr jasim um, it, it is a plea to connect with local communities, and uh, and I, I really uh, appreciate your intervention. I think maybe we should also give room to the, the questions and answers, um, the Q&A. But before that, I would like to give uh, space to uh, Ms. Sanar uh, to, uh, to react as well, and maybe to give also some of her reflections. Um, so please, uh, Sanar, it's your... Uh, uh, please, can I speak one before you go to Sanar? Of course. Can we make for the journalist, uh, young journalist, a trip to the marshes and stay one day or two days in my office in the middle of the central marshes and make each one can make one story or two story and we publish this story in Arabic language and English language at the same time? Well, I think this is an invitation that uh, can only uh, can not be refused. I think so. I think um, after this session, if if journalists who are attending this uh, this webinar are interested to follow up on this, uh, they can uh, take contact with us, and we can try to organize such um, such um, 
such a, a journey uh, to see how uh, they can also do storytelling with impact with local communities uh, that will reach out to Iraqi media. Thank you this so much. This is an invitation for me to, to, to get uh, a good time with the locals in the middle of the marshes and try uh, to waving a, a good stories and tales about the environmental above the Maidan. Shukran, shukran jazilan. jazilan. <laughs> uh, thank you. Sanar, can you please uh, maybe also give your um, give your um, your comments and feedback yes please go uh, sanar thanks Bruce. There is another reason that leads to climate change. Is the oil fields that affect the daily life of the residents in the region. And according to the health ministry, there are several diseases that are spreading among uh, nearby residents. Uh, it's related to the pollution emitted uh, from the oil fields. It affects uh, the plants, it affects the water, and thus it affects the residents who are consuming the water and the plants. Uh, definitely, this affects children more than others, especially newborns. The people who completely depended on natural resources have lost the agricultural lands and they are and don't, now they don't have the ability uh, to use this land anymore for production of crops. Uh, so this has an economic aspect as well. Uh, as I've mentioned before, uh, the journalism plays an important role in this regard as a bridge or as a hub that links uh, stakeholders, decision makers, local communities, organizations, institutions, private sector, etc. Uh, this is an issue that needs to to be part of the priorities because it affects uh, people's lives more directly than politics affects them. For example, uh, this applies to Al Basra, for example, where there are many oil fields and the people are suffering because of the pollution. Previously, those people completely depended on agriculture, and now, because of the presence of many um, oil companies uh, who treat the region as only uh, a place to dig money, uh, that's why uh, they are paying no attention to the residents, to the people who are there. Uh, people are not given uh, uh, any assets that would enable them to move and to re relocate to another place or to find other source uh, to make a living. Um, I've referred to the problems with the children as well. Many of them are now diagnosed with cancer because of this pollution. So we need to shed light on all of these issues that are increasingly uh, spreading We need to start with awareness among journalists who are focusing more on politics than on other issues. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Sanar, for your intervention. And I, I think I would like to give the floor to, uh, to Khaled. Um, maybe you could maybe also comment on what you have heard and maybe taking some of the questions that were also uh, posed in the chat. Yeah, thank you. Shukran, uh, Boris. Thank you, Boris. Honestly. Uh, we've received a couple of questions, but they are linked together. I won't answer question by question, but I will bring all of these points together and we'll start talking about them. Um, I think the first question could be answered by our colleague, uh, Daniel Hajj, or Mr. Charlson. It's a question about the role of international community and what's the role of uh, international accords and agreements in order to ensure the protection of natural resources. Uh, in, in different countries, including Iraq. 
uh, as we all know, uh, neighboring countries or uh, source countries have been building huge dams on uh, the river that which affect which affects the uh, water supply to Iraq. In this equation, where is the international community? How can the international community support Iraq uh, to face this dilemma? Uh, this is a question from Zuhair. There's another question from Jasem specifically. And the question is posted by Ahmed. Babit. I think well, his last name is Al Babit. Uh, and there is uh, another relevant question from Hassan Rubayi about the same topic. The question says there are some very real birds that are heading towards the marches in Iraq. And these marshes are now affected by pollution. Do we have information about how these rare birds are affected by the pollution? It's uh, the we have this question twice, and we have Hassan Rubai asking further whether in the uh, coming decades, in the coming years, would we witness further growth that will affect source countries such as Turkey and Iran? Uh, I will stop here. We have maybe another round of Q&A in, in, a, in a minute. There is a final, um, I think it's a comment, not, not a question, so let's take it now. It's about the, that the, previ the previous situation in Iraq when it comes to uh, environment, climate change, was really different uh, towards the uh, end of the 80s or late 80s. Would you please allow me to answer the question? Yes, there is a question addressed to you, Justin. Maybe you can start with that. The second question is about the rare birds in the marshes area. I can answer all three questions if you'll allow me. Uh, we will start with Rena, please, and then we will move to you. Uh, interesting question, in fact, but it's very, um, we can say it's an umbrella question. We need to talk about too many topics to answer it. Uh, things are mingled together in this question. If you are talking about the dams and the countries of origins, uh, it, this is uh, maybe slightly communicated. We need, first of all, to identify the priorities, the local priorities for Iraq. It is not about skipping right away to the international community. We need to, uh, any country needs to have its priorities uh, straightened to identify what is needed, what they aim at, and then they sit on negotiation tables with neighboring countries, uh, countries of origin of the river, and then they discuss and uh, then negotiate. Uh, this is based on the adopted governance technique, which takes into consideration that we will always have constant changes, uh, that the amount of water available, even in urgent countries, changing. So the agreement should be something fluid, something similar to a life document or a life agreement that can adapt to any situation, any uh, changes in the future. That's why we need to make sure that the priorities are really clear and then the negotiations are based on uh, or the decisions are made based on uh, informed negotiations. Because at the same time, uh, there are other techniques or other ways in order to secure that much water. This includes uh, minimizing uh, emissions and to adapt. This is something that should be clear and it is. Steps towards that should be in place. 
And the adaptive governance is needed in this situation. This is a long-term thing, but this is a long-term uh, process and the strategy. There are too many topics that we can discuss in order to answer this question. I said that from the beginning, yeah. so I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for this uh, discussion. And I think that um, that some of the, the, the questions that, 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 uh, that can come out of it will be uh, tackled uh, after our next speakers. Um, and I think for, um, I think uh, Jasim and Sanar for to making the intervention related to local communities. And now we moved from, let's say the academia, what the local communities expect and need from, from journalists um, actually to, 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 the, to the, let's say to the publishers and the, the newsroom, like why should, um, um, why should media um, owners and, and, and publishers um, care about uh, um, uh, stories related to climate change and, and how can they actually effectively also include that, them into the news domain uh, while um, the big breaking news stories are coming in um, uh, every minute, uh, taking away all the space and room of journalists to, to really invest time in such uh, topics. So uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce to our next two speakers. Um, I would like to introduce you to uh, Diana from uh, Daraj News, um, a publisher, uh, editor-in-chief, um, um, uh, who was uh, who is very much committed actually to to including uh, climate uh, stories into uh, to the media platform. Thank you for being with us. Um, and also uh, Salam from Kirkuk Now, who's um, an editor in chief um, of uh, Kirkuk Now, who's covering news in different languages um, in the, the disputed territories of Iraq um, from Sulaymaniyah. Thank you both for being with us. Um, I would like to start first with Diana. Um, welcome. I, uh, I'm very happy that you're here in a time of uh, 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 where the, the, the newsroom is working very hard. Uh, I also ask you to come with a picture. And, and um, so maybe we, while um, your picture is putting up, uh, talking a bit about your connection to the climate story and, and maybe about uh, giving your perspective on what uh, a publisher needs to do to get the climate story uh, told into your media. Thank you so much, Boris. I will move on now to Arabic. Uh, shukran kteer, uh... Arabia. Thank you so much. And I'm really glad to be here with you and to listen to your experiences and expertise. I don't have much to add when it comes to uh, the scientific part of it because um, it has been proven that maybe you are more expert than I am in this regard. But I'll talk about journalism in general and what Khaled referred to at the beginning of the session that journalism is linked to environment. This, uh, this picture was taken on when, when I was covering a story that is related to both politics and the environment. It was about uh, the, uh, it's a story about uh, how cut, uh, which is uh, highly consumed in Yemen, uh, depletes the underground water. Uh, and the story was between Yemen and Sana'a, and those areas are under different uh, de facto powers because of the ongoing conflict. Uh, if we are in the newsroom and we are going to think about environment, we, we can use the same systematic method we use when we are writing any story, whether it's housing or uh, economical one. Uh, maybe especially when it comes to economic, it's something that we can describe as dry or dull and we need to make it more appealing to the audience we need to ensure that uh, our audience or readers can engage with the story when we publish about something uh, that targets children this is also influential because 
maybe all of us remember how we've been affected by the first pieces that we've read. This is something that we should pay attention to and think of. Uh, issues that are related to environment and economy must be simplified and presented to children as well. Let's suppose we are talking about drought or any other environment related topic. How can we present that? Should it be a visual content or the written content? Is it a text and a video and a graphic? Or is it only a content designed for social media? Or is it something that for the newspaper? Now, uh, not all content we receive is published formally in a newspaper or in a journal. Uh, but rather there is a huge content that is designed specifically for social media. Uh, sometimes, or most of the time, we have a designer, a videographer uh, with us in the newsroom who always thinks with us and considers the best way to convey the news that we have. We always need to think of how to present the content in an interactive way to our audience. We need to think about digital platforms. Our responsibility now, our duty is not only to produce a content suitable for publishing in traditional media outlets or platforms, but we, it's our duty to ensure it's appealing to our contemporary audience. We have so many news uh, pieces about the impact of evolution on increased percentage of the spread of the illness among the population in the region. And you will see how we've turned this material, this news, uh, in different ways. And we developed various, way, uh, various forms of content to be shared with with the community, we have shown uh, photos of the children who are affected by this disease. And thus, we are saving us so many words because the, the one photo is much more clear than a text. Uh, we've proposed, proposed or prepared also posters for social media. So there are so many examples of how to do that. And I think you are aware of, of them. Maybe you are sure using them. Uh, I'm just stressing one point that it is our duty to think about both the content and the format, the accuracy of the information. The sources are important, they are vital. But the format, the, the way we present this accurate information is no less important. This is what I'm trying to stress. Uh, drought affects people, drought affects refugees. Without water, it, it's impossible to live. We live in, we live amid corruption. And just imagine how can we divide the scarce remaining water among ourselves amid this corruption. Whenever people say Lebanon, they say green Lebanon, but this is a lie. Lebanon is no longer green. We, we always claim that we look so pretty and look so green, but we live in pollution. And presenting that polluted image is a challenge for each and every newsroom because the public is the, the public, the audience that we are targeting is a young population. They are uh, an informed generation. They are people who are eager to learn and listen uh, and to know about they are eager to know about issues related not only to politics, but to all aspects of life. So we need really to think carefully about how to provide an interactive content. This is something that takes much more time than the time we have available today. 
and I think Boris will help us facilitate the future sessions to talk about examples, to think together. Maybe we will have an interactive brainstorming session and maybe we can prepare some main information about the topic in advance in order to, to have uh, uh, concrete realistic examples about how to deal with the content. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I wanted just to uh, talk about Azure issues. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. For uh, thank you also for this uh, invitation because um, you know the, the 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 what you actually mentioned is um, is um, uh, is that um, defining new ways of of publishing. We need the collective brains of of journalists, local communities, media owners, publishers together actually to make the combination. Uh, also in, in combination with uh, people that are um, have the knowledge and also all the, the research data available to them. Um, and it is through this connection with, with each other that we can come to more meaningful content that actually speaks to the audience. So and if I may add, Boris, we can include also designers and photographers because this is we're talking about multimedia uh, approach, not just research approach. And I think, and I think that this is uh, maybe a good start of um, something that we can build on also in a in a future session, if uh, of, if uh, if you would be uh, willing to participate. Um, I would like to give the floor actually to Salam. You, uh, Salam, I know you from uh, as editor in chief of Kirkuk now, and I wanted to know, uh, with all that you have heard from this session so far, how do you um, include this all into your own discussions with your uh, with the team of journalists that you have at your disposal, and 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 also to look at how can you uh, do you think you as an editor in chief has a have a special responsibility in that sense to to deal with the topic of climate change and and how do you tackle this? So maybe um, I also want to um, uh, uh, give. Uh, your picture and that you sent with us with your connection to climate change. Salam is the last picture that I will show, uh, that we will show. Thank you so much. And, and hopefully, Salam, you can um, um, say something from publishing from Iraq. Uh, how does it work? Shukran, uh, Boris. Yeah, thank you. Boris and uh, hi everyone. Uh, thank you, Diana, for the very uh, useful information. Uh, just to clarify uh, the situation in Iraq, uh, from one side, the, the, the media market in Iraq is uh, an ill market in a crisis. And uh, the political, uh, economical, and educational situation in Iraq, or because of all of this. And uh, from the beginning, the uh, goal of the training here is uh, uh, to to find these journalists who can publish and write in general in all the issues. For today, for example, we talk about the uh, uh, Israeli attack on Gaza, and we cover the COVID-19 pandemic, and we cover the general election in Iraq at the same time, which will happen in October next, uh, or next October. In the last uh, years, there were new directions in the Iraqi journalism, like the peace journalism, the uh, sensitivity journalism toward conflict, and the climate journalism. So there are the changes, there are uh, newsrooms, there are institutions that we need to talk about to be able to rise to the level of the crisis and to be able to say that we have a journalism that uh, respond to the climate uh, challenges in Iraq and changes in Iraq. So these institutions, the media institutions in Iraq are, are not politicized. They don't have the political agendas. So and the goal uh, uh, are, is the thing that they go uh, towards. Uh, the policy here is that they use, uh, the, sorry, they are politicized. They use uh, personal people, everything for the political agendas. Uh, there are not written, uh, there is no written policy 
uh, for uh, gender policy, the, for the hate speech, for the climate change. So one of the things that is requested and needed at the moment is how to help the media institutions to have the agendas for, for this issue, uh, the policies. Uh, for the coverage of the water uh, and ch climate changes, the uh, minorities. This is one of the uh, needs at the moment. Me, myself, I support the idea of having stories. So we are, our slogan is from people to people. Uh, the way of uh, conveying uh, how the people, local people thinking is what we are working on. For example, last week we had a, a de demonstration for the uh, farmers who are requesting the cement uh, factory owners to stop their work because they are uh, trying to fight against the destruction of the environment. So the policy is not written. If we had a written policy, that will help the media institutions to be on the level of right respond on seeing what's happening. One, this one. So we are also concentrating on training the journalists uh, on the media institutions. But there is another problem in Iraq, which is the taste, the, uh, the, the education level of the reader, the taste of the reader, the, P, the government, how it's looking at the media uh, from north to south. They're looking at media as a tool, or oh, sorry, as an enemy. It's not a tool for them, it's an enemy. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a part of the democratic uh, government or country to have the information, to give the information, etc. No, it has its challenges for this reason. So in the newsroom, we have specific policies of how to cover some uh, issues, some uh, uh, subjects, uh, and how to publish right information built on documentations, built on right uh, data to help building the right opinion on any subject, whether it's a political uh, issue or a minority issue, etc. So this is important. Training is important. Preparing is important because it's not existing. Uh, uh, as mentioned before, we can have 1% of publishing happening in this regard in the climate change issue, which is correct. We need this for this to happen. OK. And uh, Salam, I think, uh, thank you for your intervention. And, and still, I, the, the picture is up with you uh, being photographed. Um, um, and this was also a representation of how you, uh, what your connection is to the story of climate change. Would you be able to, to tell something about this, the, this particular photo? Uh, I think I think that I'm, I'm a village person. I came from the village. I'm a village person. I go to the nature and look at the changes happening in nature. What happened in the last 10 to 15 years uh, is actually a disaster. The, uh, the city that I live in at the moment, the temperature is, can reach 50 at the moment. Uh, from 46 to 50 degrees. So, uh, as a journalist and as an individual, I am related to this subject so much. Uh, the human side of it is there also, but at the same time, I think that we in Iraq, the European society, uh, we need to have more research, okay? We need to have more numbers. We don't have that. I, as a journalist, if I don't have a data, if I have statistics, I can be like other uh, citizens. Of course, we need to have a story. Of course, we need to have a good story that affects people. But at the same time, this is very important to be built on numbers. Well, thank you so much, uh, Salam, and um, also Diana. I think maybe. Uh, what I would like to do uh, before I actually uh, go to a certain conclusion, because um, we are almost at the end of the, the webinar, 
which is a kickoff of hopefully a new webinar in which we can dive deeper, deeper into the story that we just have uh, done. I would like to give the floor to, uh, to Khaled. Maybe um, it, are there some questions that, that yes. are missing out or some reflections or some conclusions that you would like to add um, uh, um, based on all what we have heard so far? Khaled. Shukran, uh, shukran uh, Boris. Uh, yeah, thank you, Boris. Uh, honestly speaking, uh, I didn't want to take a lot of uh, you, uh, the time of the webinar because uh, my colleagues talked about a lot of issues. I just want to concentrate on two questions, okay? One of them uh, from Hawkat Jalal is asking, what is the easiest way, okay? The easiest way to convey the environmental content from the media to people? The question is to Diana and Salam, I guess. So what's the, the easiest way? This is the first question. Second question from Asta Wahab, who is also a journalist colleague. He's talking about the current conflicts and the uh, military confrontations that is existing in the region. How can we, among all of this, uh, direct the general opinion, the media to the uh, environmental issues and problems that we are facing? So these are the two questions. If uh, Boris, uh, uh, we have time to answer. There is another question that was uh, sent to Jasmine Al Asadi. If we had time, if we have time, we uh, Jasmine will answer the question on uh, the question. Or, yeah. Well, let's go first to Salam and Diana. Can you please uh, comment on the question that was posed uh, through Khaled? Um, I think that the journalist needs to be smart. So, I mean, as a journalist, I worked in, in a lot of institutions, independent, etc. So a lot of in the different institutions are always a, a, an area or an, a space. Uh, we give what we want to give, okay? The newsroom is, this depends on the newsroom and journalists working the newsroom so on the uh, the uh, what we have in iraq we cannot change everything in one day okay so we have institutions who are uh, like spending the money of the government who are taking the money of the government so we are not me as a journalist uh, but there are other journalists who are working in the partisan uh, institutions they need to have this awareness that this is important they need to talk about this as well and there should be a collaboration between the media institution with the partisan or the independent ones to be able to work on this subject uh, more. And there is always space for that. Uh, if the journalist has this vision, if the journalists have this awareness for this important subject in Iraq, one of them is the climate change, of course, uh, and the hate speech and uh, the conflict related journalism as well. Uh, what has mentioned by Salam are definitely correct. So we need to be creative in how to find ways in uh, uh, presenting the uh, subject. Uh, one of them, the collaboration, the uh, cross uh, border collaboration. Uh, collaboration between the local and the international the, to collaborate with the local news uh, who are not able to uh, deal with these issues because of the pressure because of the lack of finance so we publish uh, with them so that uh, this uh, actually uh, reaches the reader so if there is a way uh, that uh, if the local uh, uh, website do not want to collaborate with others, they can uh, create an individual uh, uh, material content. Everyone will be affected by the environment. There is no one who will not be affected by the climate change. So they all want to hear about. There is no ready tailor. Uh, oh, sorry, there is no ready answer for this. They should be tailor made. Where they need to know where are the uh, crisis or where, where are the risks. Uh, uh, so the relations, uh, uh, the cross uh, national uh, cross border relations are very important for the media, for the journalism and the modern journalism. We need to think of uh, of those who uh, are uh, uh, actually 
creating content. Uh, the, the, the idea here is not only publishing, but the creating the right content that will reach the reader. If you don't, if they don't reach the reader, that doesn't actually meet the uh, the point. So the networking between the group of uh, different entities, uh, uh, content creators, uh, the uh, platforms. So we might do sessions of platforming on how to change this content and via and how to convey it via different uh, platforms. But this needs commitment. This needs to. Uh, this needs people to work on it more. Yeah. Uh, First, the last question is only about, it's not the last question, actually. It's a question that was asked before for Jasim from Hussein Rubai and Ahmed Dabit, who are asking about the Ahwar in Iraq. They are asking about the birds who are really rare there. Uh, uh, and this is, the, the, that was the reason why it was in the, the uh, World Heritage of UNESCO. So uh, this climate change, did it affect the birds? Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Hassan, for this question. Of course, the pollution uh, affected the all, all the uh, creatures there, uh, mammals, uh, plants, human uh, animals, and uh, etc. So with the water sewage and uh, that is uh, actually getting together with the normal water this is actually it has a lot of concentrated uh, poison uh, so and also we had this polluted water actually affected a lot of the buffaloes uh, and we have the pollution that's coming out of the petroleum uh, in the area and so al ahwar in Iraq also contend to have uh, have actually birds who is in the red list. Uh, so we need to protect them because they are really uh, rare uh, birds. Hmm. But I only want to say that the effect on the mammals and the uh, birds uh, is actually created by the human. Uh, from the local societies of how, how to they deal with some uh, of the animals and the very rare uh, animals uh, and they, where they are actually hunting or fishing uh, between the 15th of Feb to 15th of, May, of April, which is uh, prohibited, but they still do that. And also they use uh, an uh, ethical way to hunt and fish uh, using the electrical shocking uh, methods. The fishers don't see this chain, this uh, food chain uh, affected, uh, unfortunately. So this is one of the effects, this is one of the problems that's very important. And also, uh, in my opinion, I think that uh, we can work on this, on focus uh, on this, uh, like we did like two years uh, before on how we did the advocacy campaigns uh, for the birds. The uh, journalism had a very important role on increasing awareness on how to protect these animals and the decreasing of the effects of the pollution in general. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, um, Mr. Jassim. And then before I give, um, uh, let's say, a final conclusion word to Mr. Khaled, um, I would like to round up the, 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 the webinar because um, uh, I, and when we were preparing the webinar and we tried to say, like, let's try to do it within an hour, uh, I think um, uh, it was an, an mission impossible. Um, but uh, I'm very happy that uh, that we were able to take a little bit more time uh, from you all um, uh, because it was a very valuable uh, webinar session with a lot of interesting web uh, insights. Uh, I would like to thank um, Rana from giving the perspective of um, and also the advice of dig deeper, be proactive, learn the data, understand the dynamics behind it and try to translate it. So thank you so much, Rana. And I hope that, that you will stay engaged with, with the future projects. Um, I also would like to, 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 ask, uh, to, to thank 
uh, Sanar and, and Mr. Jassem for both giving the perspective of local communities and actually that is an, a clear invitation to, uh, to translate stories in connection to local communities. And Sanar, you have proven to do that in very inclusively um, in your storytelling. So, so keep up the good work and hope that we can continue to collaborate. Uh, Mr. Jassim, you have given us um, an invitation to, to come and, and also to, to see it with our own eyes and that journalists are welcome to, to do so. And um, in combination with um, and Diana's and Salam's uh, intervention, thank you so much to give the perspective of the, the, the newsroom, the editors in chief perspective and, and try to innovate and try to come with new storytelling techniques with through networking and through different ways uh, um, between uh, journalists in Iraq itself, but also in connection with other journalists outside and, and try to, to, to stimulate to get a cross-media approach. Thank you so much for your interventions as well. Khaled, maybe you have a final conclusion. Uh, thank you, Naam, uh, Boris. Uh, thank you, uh, shukran jazeelan. Uh, yes, Boris, thank you uh, again. Uh, I'll try uh, to summarize as much as possible the ideas that was mentioned of, uh, from my colleagues and the researchers and the experts, the, which is the importance of translating the data and statistics into a journalism language uh, and conveying it to the reader, the audience, and uh, giving, trying to suggest solutions. We are fed uh, with the uh, problems. We want to find solutions. And also uh, the, the creative part of this story is very important and how the journalists uh, can change the content into a creative content well, and the importance of that, uh, and also the importance of the role of the uh, um, editor in chef, uh, chef uh, and that they, it's up to them uh, at the end. If they don't care about the environment, then uh, uh, the stage will be empty, will be left empty. Uh, and also uh, the connection between the researcher, the academicians and the journalists. Uh, we journalists, we are not experts, we are not the researchers, we're not scientists. So we need to be in close col collection, connection sorry, with those to be able to give the right information to the reader, to the audience. We need to convey the uh, uh, the voices of the local society as well. We need to find the solution from after hearing the voices of the audience. Uh, this is very important in terms of, of having the solution. The last, or no, uh, the one before the last uh, point, collaboration as mentioned by my colleague, Diana. Uh, cross borders collaboration is very important. And as mentioned by you, Boris, we need to create a network of journalists uh, from Tunisia to Jordan to Iraq that connect everyone together in this regard. Also, it's very important to continue on the uh, spending all of this effort to, to create the generation of uh, climate change sensitive journalists. These are the po most important points that has been mentioned in the uh, webinar. Thank you so much. Then I would like to conclude this webinar uh, by thanking, first of all, the, the Planetary Secu Security Initiative and our lead partner, Klingendal Institute here in the Netherlands. Uh, they have made it possible to, to be part of this uh, wonderful journey in connecting um, policy and, and, and journalism uh, in relation to climate change and conflict. And I am very appreciated to them. Um, I'm of, of course very uh, appreciative to, to also Free Press Unlimited to embrace this, this, this journey of, uh, of investing in more of a new innovative way of, of uh, 
finding ways to support journalists through fellowship, production fellowships uh, for journalists, which we will do in the, in the future again. Um, um, I hope that, um, that all the journalists that were participating here today uh, will be able to be engaged with us in the future and hopefully to be in contact with you all um, and, and uh, try to, to network towards the future. Uh, I would like to, to really thank you all for, this, for the time that you have spent. Um, and also, of course, I would like to thank uh, ICRA Global and the interpreters for their wonderful job to make it possible that the, the Babylonian speech uh, will not happen and that, uh, that my English is well translated into to Arabic and the other way around. So thank you so much for everybody.